Hello guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kamil Kuzmiak and this is the first episode of my vlog. Actually, it's not the first episode of my vlog, but it's, it's my first vlog in English. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you're going to be able to understand what I'm saying here. And in today's episode, I'm gonna tell you about my everyday lightweight vlogging setup. So let's get to it. You probably ask yourself, why should I have lightweight everyday vlogging setup? If I have my DSLR or my production camera or my mirrorless camera and my gimbal and tripod, why should I think about uh, lightweight vlogging setup? It doesn't matter if you want to be a daily vlogger and make vlogs every single day or you just want to be a casual vlogger that uploads once a week or uh, once every two weeks. So the thing is that most of the time the camera is at home. So very often we are somewhere spontaneously in some great situation. We think to ourselves the lighting is beautiful, the situation is magical, it's the perfect time and place to make a great video, but we don't have the camera on us. Famous photographer Chase Jervis said that the best camera is the one that's with you and that's actually very true. And in my case the camera that's always on me is my phone basically. My phone is Samsung Galaxy S10. Is Samsung Galaxy S10 the best phone for vlogger to make videos? Yes and no. To be honest with you, I'm not gonna recommend you this phone. I need to confess that I was a little bit ignorant with my choice. I was only considering the camera. And the thing is that the camera itself in this phone is actually very decent. It has three lenses, so you have the telephoto lens, you have the wide-angle lens and the ultra-wide-angle lens. So the lens setup is very similar like the iPhone 11 Pro. However, on the iPhone 11 Pro, you have 4K 60 frames per second on each lens. And on, on my phone, you only have 4K 60 frames per second on the middle, on the wide angle lens. Is it a problem? Yes and no. You can make a choice. You can shoot 4K 30 frames per second across all the lenses. But if you want to shoot 60 frames per second 4K for that slow motion B-roll, you are limited to the wide angle lens. And it's it can be problematic because when you are using iPhone and you have 60 frames per second across all of the lenses, then you can just switch to 4K 60, swap between the lenses, wide angle, telephoto lens, ultra wide angle lens and you can have a, a, a large variety of different shots. In case of this phone, it's a little bit problematic because let's imagine I'm shooting in 4K 60, I have the wide angle lens, and now I want to make an ultra wide angle shot or telephoto shot. I can't just press the button and swap the lenses. I need to go to the settings, change the frame rate from 60 to 30 FPS, and then I have the option to change my lenses. So let's say I, I make one or two shots with the ultra wide angle lens, and then I want to continue shooting in the slow motion. I need to come back to the settings again, and that's quite problematic, to be honest. Another thing I didn't consider when I was buying this phone is the software, obviously, the, the OS because uh, I'm working on my MacBook, I'm working in Final Cut Pro. So if I had an iPhone, it would be much easier for me because I could start editing video in iMovie and iMovie is free and it has a lot of options. I could transfer the, the project from my iPhone to my MacBook and finish it on the Final Cut. So that would be very convenient. With the Android, I can't really do it. And also the price of video editing software is another factor because on iPhone, I could have iMovie for free and have all the, all the functionality I need from the mobile device to edit some quick video on the go. I could also migrate the project to the MacBook and finish it in Final Cut in more advanced software. And it's free. On the other hand, on Android, you can have Adobe Rush. And uh, the thing is that Adobe Rush is nine pounds per month. If you add the, the cost of Adobe Rush for two years, it will be like 240 pounds extra added to, to, to the price of Samsung, then Samsung Galaxy S10 and iPhone 11 Pro is pretty much the same price if you consider the price of software in that particular case. So that's why I don't think it's the best phone for the content creator. But don't get me wrong, it's, it's actually a pretty good camera. And also you have the SD card slot so you can put as much memory as, as, as you want anytime. So that's, that's a plus. 
but the software it's it's something that's gonna limit you there is actually a plenty of great apps on ios that are very useful for content creators but you can't really have them on android for example there is an app called focus that ha helps you to edit the the picture with the artificial uh, blurry background if there is any mistake in the um, in the outline of the person you can fix it in post that's a very handy software you can't have it on the android another handy app is the moment app and actually i purchased the moment app i paid five pounds for it and it's not it's not longer supported with updates so basically i have i have only the the basic options and recently moment launched a very cool feature you can you can make a time lapse with your phone with this great motion blur baked in which is actually very handy because otherwise you need to do it in post and motion blur it's it's that kind of effect that renders quite long and it's quite heavy for the computer so if you can actually make a quick time lapse with your phone with the motion blur baked in in the footage and you can just throw that on your timeline that's actually like a great time saver another cool app that you can have on android is uh, ar placer cam it's the app that lets you to create a caption and this caption is is uh, tracked in the 3d space so imagine you have the phone on your gimbal and you make like a like a round shot or or like a forward moving shot you can have a caption with the with the name of your vlog or, or, or with the title of the episode and it's perfectly tracked in 3D and it's gonna be baked into the footage. It is another great time saver because if you don't have that app and if you want to make a lot of content, you're gonna have to go to the After Effects or Apple Motion and you're gonna have to do all that uh, 3D tracking manually and it, it's gonna take time and it's gonna render. It is the right thing to do if you are working on a very serious project and it's a commercial job but if it is just a vlog it would be great to do it straight in your phone and don't worry about the post-production so basically this phone it's a nice camera it's it's good for gaming it's it's good for taking pictures for shooting videos but if you are a content creator and if you want to edit videos on your phone if you add, want to add 3d captions to your footage and if you want to have a great video editing software that's that's a part of the os I would definitely recommend to think about iPhone 11 Pro and that's what I'm going to do as well. The problem is that I just bought this phone a couple months ago and um, the resale value of Samsung is basically nothing. If you, if you open the box it's like 50% gone. So if I wanted to sell this phone and buy iPhone now I would, I would lose like 60% of, of what I paid for it a couple months ago. So I'll just try to make the best of it. But enough about the phone, you should get the phone that is the most convenient to you personally. Uh, let's move to the second point of the lightweight vlogging setup, that's going to be the gimbal. And in, in my case, the gimbal is Osmo Mobile 3. I'm not going to do very detailed unboxing because that, that gimbal is old news and there is loads of unboxing online and th there are channels that are doing a much way better job in unboxing than me but i'll just quickly go through it so we open the box we have this little pouch here with the gimbal inside there is another box inside in the little box you have your little tripod there is also like a like a little bag inside some instruction manual let's go straight to the point so the gimbal is inside this pouch. To give you some perspective, this is vlogging with the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. And this is vlogging with the DJI Ronin S. So this is your camera gimbal and this is your smartphone gimbal. So as you can see, it's not very lightweight and it's not very everyday. To give you another perspective, that's the difference between the Osmo Mobile 3 and the Zhiyun Smooth 4. This is a mobile gimbal as well, but it's not folding. So because it doesn't have that folding design, it takes way more space, as you can see. So, so the folding design is crucial. So inside the pouch, we have our gimbal. The great benefit of that gimbal is the folding design. So you can just unfold. If you want to take a break, you just fold the gimbal in half and put it into your bum bag. And it is very convenient, actually.
It's also quite easy to balance. All you have to do, put the phone in the vertical position and move it slightly so it stays in one place like this. Then you move the phone to the horizontal position and you need to move it this way to make it steady. But the problem is that the ultra wide angle lens has such a wide angle of view all the time you can see the motor here in the shot. However, there is a solution for that and it's called the counterweight. So I have this counterweight from Ulanzi. Uh, it's, it's just a simple piece of metal with a thread. You basically have three little elements. You can use as many you need. Actually, in case of the Samsung Galaxy S10, you need to use all of them. If you have the iPhone 11 Pro, you can see a little bit of the motor as well. Not, it's not as bad because the, the lens on the iPhone is a little bit further away from the center of the, uh, of the weight but still you can see a little bit of the motor but usually with the iPhone it's not a problem because with the iPhone if you attach the power source here the, the weight of the cable is enough to balance with the Samsung Galaxy S10 you need to use the counterweight so there is a special thread for the counterweight right here so we're gonna just attach the counterweight and now you can see that it's heavy on the other side so we're gonna just we can just move the phone further away from the motor so now we're not gonna see the motor in the wide angle lens and that's it now the phone is perfectly balanced as you can see yeah now it's perfect so now we can turn the gimbal on you just press this button and now we can see another big advantage of this gimbal so basically we can move from the vertical video to horizontal with just the press of the button and that's very cool because for example you're shooting a vlog and suddenly you want to shoot uh, Insta Story, you just press this button twice and you are in the vertical mode and you can shoot some Insta Story, maybe make some live video. You want to continue shooting your YouTube vlog, you just press this button twice. So to compare, this is the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and this is a non-folding smartphone gimbal. So you can see the difference, but especially if you fold that gimbal in half like that then you can see a real difference and if you want to get some more perspective this is a camera gimbal a DJI Ronin S so I don't know what's more every day you tell me there is no vlog without the sound so um, my microphone of choice is the love microphone is the same love microphone I have on me at the moment because this microphone you can use with both your smartphone and your camera. It comes in the nice little pouch like this and inside you have a lavalier microphone with a very long cable and you have a little switch here. You can switch between camera and smartphone, so that's very useful. I like to attach the microphone to my jacket and then I like to put the cable through my sleeve so the cable is sticking out of the sleeve like this and then I make sure that I have enough excess this cable is really long it's like five meters probably so I usually just uh, take the excess cable and I wrap it around my wrist underneath my jacket and I make sure that I have enough cable to just plug the sound into my phone and that way every time you want to record the sound you just take the cable out of your sleeve, plug it into your phone and you are good to go. And it's also a very affordable solution because this microphone is like 20 pounds, so it's not gonna break the bank. So we have our camera, we have our gimbal, we have our microphone. What's next? The next thing is power bank. So my power bank is nothing special. It's some generic power bank I bought on Amazon. It's 20,000 milliamp hours, so it, it can charge your phone probably like four or five times. It depends on the phone. It has a little indicator here. You can see how many percent it's left. It's nothing special, it's just a power bank. I would recommend something between 10,000 and 20,000, maybe even 30,000. The next part of my everyday vlogging setup is something that I like to use on everything, which is magnetic USB cables. Basically, I have the long one for the power delivery and I have the short one to power my phone from my gimbal. So basically you have the normal USB on one side and on the other side you have this magnetic connection. It's similar like the MagSafe on the 2015 MacBook. 
and you buy these little connectors and it doesn't matter which connector you need because you have all of them you can have micro usb you can have usb-c you can have lighting connector basically you plug that little connector to any device you want to power you just use one cable and you just simply connect that magnetic tip to any device you want i use it for all of my devices except of the hard drives because i've noticed that uh, the magnetic cable isn't very fast for the for the data transfer so yeah i just just don't use it on your drive if you're shooting a video and your phone is dying take the short magnetic cable and then you can take the power from the gimbal and you can just plug your phone in and now your phone is charging from the gimbal but if your gimbal is low on battery which is unlikely to happen because it's 15 hours of battery life, but let's say you forgot to charge it or maybe you charge your phone a couple times and your battery is running low. Plug the USB into your battery bank. You can put the power bank into your pocket and you can plug the power into the gimbal like that. The thing is that you can't charge the gimbal and your phone at the same time. I thought it's going to be possible, but it's not possible with Osmo Mobile 3, unfortunately. Basically, you can keep both of them connected. However, if this one is connected and this one is connected, the phone is not charging. So if your gimbal battery is full, but your phone is dying and you just want the gimbal to start charging the phone, all you need to do is unplug this cable and then the gimbal will start to charge your phone. If your gimbal is running low, all you need to do is plug this cable again and basically you can vlog 48 hours straight like this. You're not going to, but you can. I also have some filters. I have the ND filter. It's like a clip-on ND filter you can put on your lens. You, you probably know what is the ND filter, but if you don't know what is the ND filter, it's like a sunglasses for your lens. If the sun is too bright outside and you want to shoot cinematic video, you need to put the sunglasses on your lens. And this is the filter that you can spin and make it lighter or darker. And basically you can plug that on your lens like this and you're good to go when i shoot with the camera i always use it but when i shoot with my phone i don't bother that much another filter i have is the anamorphic filter but uh, i'm not gonna talk about anamorphic today it's the subject for a different vlog and i haven't tested the filter yet but it's gonna be the part of my everyday vlogging setup so we have the camera, we have the gimbal, we have the magnetic cables, we have the power supply, we have the microphone, we have some filters, and now we're gonna have to carry that everywhere and every day. So we're gonna need some bag, and for that, I actually have something very special. It's a bum bag from Primark. It was very expensive. I paid four pounds for it. The thing with pouches is that if you buy your pouches like that from the company that makes photography equipment like camera bags and camera backpacks, you're probably gonna pay a lot. And obviously in the ideal world, when the budget is unlimited, we're gonna have every, everything from Nomatic or something, which is cool. But if you are on the budget, actually, you can save quite a lot of money if you don't buy your pouches from the photography companies. In that case, I have this bum bag from Primark for four pounds and it can fit all of the stuff you can see here. Uh, I also have I also have this toiletries bags from Primark as well. It was like five pounds and I use it as a pouch for all the accessories like gaff tape and ND filters and all that stuff. And I just throw it into the camera bag. I also have this wallet pouch thingy I bought from Pound Lounge. This is pretty cool because I paid only one pound for it and I use it as a case for my hard drive. So I put my hard drive here, there is memory foam around, there is some, some pocket for the cable, and yeah, and it was one pound. If I wanted to purchase that kind of bag for my hard drive in photography store, I would probably pay like 10 or 20 quid for it. If you can save this money to buy better lens or better camera or drone or gimbal, you can always, you know, save money on pouches. All right, guys, so now you're gonna see a little time lapse of me putting all that stuff into this bag, so wish me luck. I always forget how to fold this thing. So, as you can see, our entire vlogging setup 
fits securely into this little bag. It's very lightweight, it's very small. You can carry that with you everywhere you go, every single day. You can throw it into your glove box in your car or just, you know, carry over your shoulder. And I'm not gonna lie, it's not that lightweight, you know what I mean? Like, you can feel it, you know? But yeah, you can have everything you need to make vlogs every single day of the year on you all the time. Okay, I have my everyday lightweight vlogging setup now, so I'm gonna go and shoot some B-roll for you guys, so see you in a minute. So we are at the Spitalfields market. We are going to try to get some B-roll with Samsung Galaxy S10 on the Osmo Mobile 3. So yeah, let's see how it goes. The sound is plugged via mini jack, so we're gonna see how the sound quality is. Hello guys, I'm back as you probably noticed from the crowded streets of London on my b-roll that I was I was lying and some of the shots I made a couple weeks before the lockdown actually. The thing is I've shot the b-roll three months ago. I was trying to record that vlog three times and I failed and now finally I, I made it. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for today's vlog. If you had fun, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because there is more content on the way. If you didn't have fun, then... Then it's a little bit sad, but what can I do? Maybe the next one is gonna be better. And if you have any suggestions on the everyday lightweight vlogging setup, just feel more than welcome to leave them in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you because you probably have some great ideas to improve the concept of my everyday vlogging setup. And see you in the next one.